Okay, hi. Welcome to, welcome to our next tutorial. Um, a little more meaningful life cycle cost evaluation here. When I say meaningful, I mean a little more meat on the bones in respect to um, what actually happens. Um, over the last um, number of tutorials, I've been showing you the calculations and I've been showing you maybe those calculations um, for a couple or a number of life cycle costing items. But here we can see uh, the calculation of facilities management costs. Now there is only six or seven costs in there. There could be a whole lot more, but at least it gives you an idea um, as to how you might calculate these items. These ones, as in the exercise 4FM, facilities management, um, are yearly costs. So facilities management costs that would occur on a yearly basis. Um, and then I have another uh, sheet um, for costs that occur at, at irregular intervals. And maybe they may be replacement costs or repair costs, plant vent and maintenance um, that occur, you know, every five years, every 10 years, depending on what you need to do. And uh, I suppose the service life duration of those particular items. Um, starting off with the facilities management costs, you can see in the top left hand corner here, we have real costs. A little bit further down with the nominal costs, which are our future costs, our forecast costs, with the escalation rate um, accounted for. And then we got our PV, our discounted present value. So we want to calculate the total nominal costs and the total present value. And of course, the total base costs are real costs for those items. Um, again, we're going to do a little bit more um, detailed analysis here. Um, We've got a similar kind of setup to what you see in the cost plan or bill of quantities. We've got a unit rate, um, quantity unit and rate. So if we've got cleaning 1500 meters squared at a certain rate, that's going to be our cost. Same goes for building and asset maintenance, waste management. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be a cost per meter squared. It could be a cost per lump sum, cost per item, cost per meter cubed, uh, cost per unit. And um, just like you'd see in a, again in a cost plan. So quantity times rate equals cost. Now that could be a weekly cost, it could be a daily cost, it could be the cost within a year. So we want to calculate what the yearly total is. And if it's a cost per week, we multiply by 52 in terms of a number of occurrence. Um, if it's cost per year already, we leave it at one. Um, if it's cost per day, 365, etc. So we can see there, if I double click the cost, quantity by rate equals cost. And then if I double click the yearly total, calculations are already in there and that is number of occurrences times the cost so that first item we've got cleaning 1500 uh, meter squared at a rate of 35 cent uh, a meter squared cost per week is 525 multiply by 52 to get our yearly total we don't have to do the same on the next item because it's already a yearly cost okay so what is um, and how do we input all that information on a yearly basis well we could physically type it in um, from year to year and from item to item it takes us a little bit of time but as i showed you before you can use the kind of power of excel so to speak to uh, to do this quickly so i'd start by again every time i use a formula click equals and click that first item so that would be the first item and again i could go equals keep clicking um, from from I suppose year to year to get each one of those items which are exactly the same on a real basis in today's money from year to year. But as I said, why would I do that when Excel has a way of doing it for me? So I'm gonna click equals and then click the total. Now what I want this to do, I don't want to lock the cell because if I lock that cell and fill across and fill down, it'll fill in 27,300 into every item. Um, I just want 27,300 in this particular row for cleaning. And then I wanted to move down to 27,750 for the next row and 11,700 for the next row, etc. So in doing so, I need to lock the column, but not the row. So it'll lock to that column, but it'll let the totals move down from row to row. So in doing so, I've got I5, which I clicked. And I want to put a little dollar in front of the I. So shift uh, four so dollar i and do not put the dollar in front of five because it'll lock that cell whereas i don't want it to do that i just want it to lock um the column which is the first um i suppose uh, uh letter so click return now if i pull that across with a little right click um or sorry it's left click but it's the right uh, little dot that's the right 
bottom uh, dot there, pull it all the way across, keep going um, to year 28 and release. Um, and then if I leave that highlighted and pull the bottom right hand corner down by left clicking, holding down the left mouse click and release. And there I should have the exact same items in every column um, on a yearly basis. So from a total point of view, let's total it, equals sum, and fill down, hit return. Do the same for each one, or fill all the way across, or copy paste all the way across. Again, using this little crosshair, which is real handy uh, functionality in Excel, I'm gonna pull that all the way across, and it'll fill that formula from item to item, and release. So it should be the exact same um, from year to year, because we're calculating it in real costs. And in doing so, it's today's money for every year, so to speak. So let's calculate a total for those 28 years for each item. So that would be in each row equals the sum of, and then all the way across that particular row and release at 28. So hit return. And then we're gonna do the same. In fact, if I pull that down, it should work, and I think it does. So double click to check one, yep, and then total. And hit return. Um, maybe give these a little comma separator to show that they're numbers, and we've got a significant sum of money there over 20 years in terms of facilities management costs, four million. 113,760 euro. Continuing on from that, um, we got to calculate our nominal costs, so our future forecast costs accounting for our escalation. So a couple of different factors here are different escalation rates. One for normal escalation, which would include um, construction materials and services. And then I have a different one for escalation of energy. So energy is slightly uh, increasing at uh, a bigger rate than uh, normal escalation, which can be uh, the fact, be it our gas or electricity seems to be priced, or we increasing at a, at a higher price than uh, normal goods and services. So we're counting for that here. Um, might start with the normal escalation factor, or at least the goods and services escalation factor at 2.5% first. So let's calculate that. Um, again, if you can remember the formula, there's a couple of different formulas to the power formula or to the normal um, one plus the rate to the power of n being the time or being the year. So let's use that um, equals, I believe it's open brackets if I can remember, one plus um, click on the escalation rate of 2.5%. Close the brackets and then multiply by um, the or sorry, not multiply by, that's a mistake, to the factor of, and then click one. Okay, so we need to do a couple of things here. Let's lock that cell. Let's lock the um, I-15 by highlighting it up here and pressing F4. So dollar I, dollar 15, and multiply by um, row K18. And we'll leave that as is, because that should pull across um, as we go from item to item. So if we click return. Um, now, if you need to increase um, or decrease the decimal points there, do so. Um, it's pretty obvious that it should be 1.025 because it's 2.5% on the factor of one at the end of the year. So as I pull that across, it should increase, multiply every factor um, by 2.5% on a year to year basis. As we go across and release, we're left with 1.9965. So that's our factor. Um, our factors for our um, for our escalation of construction goods and services. Uh, let's do the same um, for E lower E, which is E lower energy, E lower M being E lower materials. I might even copy that formula, copy and paste. Okay, now a double click just to make sure that has went down one. But well, let's pull it up or change it to K18 rather than uh, K19. Um, and it is locked at that cell, but I'm gonna lock it, pull it up. How do I do that? I just hover over the outside, and there now, rather than having to type it in, I just moved around 
the cells by using the color kind of borders here, hovering over them, moving them up and down. So I can see that that's probably right. One plus I14 to the lock um, in terms of that cell to the power of K18. So if I hit return, that should be uh, 1.0367 and it is because it's um, one unit the first year multiplied by um, that first percentage in terms of escalation. So pull that across and that should be uh, going up um, at a more or a further rate than the previous factor. So I kind of leave this uh, to yourselves, but maybe start you off. So the first item there is cleaning. What do I want to do? I want to equals and go up to cleaning, hit it, and then multiply that item by cleaning is would be goods and services. So it would be E lower N. So the first item there and hit return. Now, I want to possibly lock that row, row 15, because I don't want it when I pull it down to move to this row. We'll get to why that is in a second, because it would move on to that factor. But to lock that row, which is K14, sorry, K15, um, I'm going to put um, a little dollar in front of the 15. So it's almost uh, the opposite of what I did up here where I locked the column. So K5, I'll let that float because I want that to move from item to item and down um, also in terms of column from item to item. So I'll let both the row and the column float. And this one, I'll lock the row because I don't want it to move down in terms of um, down the columns in terms of the cells. Okay, so let's try that. Um, sometimes you can make a mistake. You can figure out that you have made a mistake by locking the wrong column or row um, or locking either one when you should lock the other. Um, and you might have to go back, which is no big deal. So that makes sense. It's that multiplied by that is that. Now, if I pull it across, um, I can see that each item is moving across with it. So go all the way across and hit um, release as you pull it across. And, um, and what you can also do then is, let's even check one. So that by that item. What you can also do, do then is hopefully, let's check this. As I pull that across there, okay, and then all that row is highlighted um, as a kind of complete row. And then I've got my little check grid um, item here, bottom right hand corner, and pull that down. And hopefully it would have escalated based on what row I've uh, locked um, to each respective item. So let's just double click one of them to check. So in this particular column, it would be this particular factor. Um, this is grounds maintenance, so it should be multiplying by grounds maintenance, and it is. So that's all good and well, but remember, we've got energy and utility costs. That isn't multiplied by a factor of, let's say, in the first column, 1.025. It's multiplied by a factor of 1.0367. So that one column, sorry, that one row, we need to change. So let's double click that. And let's just um, leave everything as is, but pull down that E lower M factor, material goods and services. Just hover over it, push on your left kick button, release. Pull it down and release. So now you've changed it to that. And obviously you need to do the same um, for each one of those items across that row. So release. All right, and maybe just to signify that it's different, you could give it an italics um, or maybe give it a color. Same as what's going on, going up here, total each row, get your totals for each item um, per row and get your total escalated costs. Then, um, and I want you to, to do this yourselves, um, then go down to your present value. Present value will be a little bit easier. You'll put in your present factor uh, formula. Um, you've just got one rate. You don't have to split rates in terms of escalation like you did there into two. It's just one that will apply to all. And then you'll apply it to the nominal cost. You'll apply it to the escalated costs. Um, students make, make mistakes sometimes. They apply their discount to the real costs. The logic of that, of course, is what we went through in class. You have your real costs or your base costs, today's money. You escalate it to your forecast costs. And then you discount those forecast costs. Now you can, as I said before, do them in one calculation, 
but we're showing that step-by-step -step process because we might we might want to show our client um both i suppose both nominal costs and and uh escalate or sorry both escalated nominal costs and uh present value costs um whereas if you're doing it in one calculation you don't get to see your escalated costs because it's included in the actual real rate real discount rate probably confusing you there but you understand the logic of the steps which is the most important thing and now we're applying it to a kind of a real world scenario okay so we'll move on from that now to exercise four and um, the replacement um, based on our cost plans replacement items okay moving on to replacement costs and um, these are calculated differently and um, because they're not yearly costs um, occurring in a uniform basis over each year and then escalated um, and discounted in a uniform process they're a regular cost so they do treat it a little bit differently now these are um, would be replacement costs and repair costs you can see there on an item by item basis they're occurring at irregular intervals over a certain certain study period and um, so we got using 28 uh, years again and um, so within that 28 years we've got replacement of roof coverings so that would be year 10 replaced uh, year 20 replaced and year 30 replaced but of course um, if year 30 which it is outside our 20 years 28 uh, year study period we won't be replacing in the year 30 because it's outside that period so year 12 year 24 and then that's our last uh, replacement of that item and um, because again the next item or the next replacement is outside the study period and so on and so on and um, the windows will be just replaced once within the study period same with the internal walls and partitions um, so that's the logic now what we can do and um, we've got what you would see in a cost plan we've got a quantity unit rate and we've got an uplift factor now the uplift factor um, is essentially an allowance for the demolition of the existing item when that item gets replaced so obviously uh, if we're putting a new item in or the same item in again we have to take out the existing item and that's an additional 10 percent as opposed to installing it for the first time on a concrete floor and um, that is prepped for you and um, so that's what that uplift factor is so you'll see that last item there quantity unit rate cost uplift and it's all just 10 percent could be different from item to item depending on what it is but um, let's just go with 10 percent on each item for the moment and then that last item there in this series of columns is our factored cost and that's essentially our uplift multiplied by our cost okay so as i said let's deal with them um, let's deal with this first item and once we can do that and um, we can apply the same scenario uh, to each row and um, this first scenario is getting replaced in year 10 i could scroll across to year 10 and type in that number that factored cost do the same for year 20 um, and then i wouldn't have it again because it's outside the 20 year period 28 year period and we can do the same then for each row each relevant row but again as i said before if you can use uh, the functionality of excel to do it quicker do so i'm going to show you a little tricky formula to put in here using uh, a divisor formula uh, an if scenario and a divisor formula um, <clears throat> i know this might sound a little bit difficult but once you've done this once like every calculation in life cycle costing you can use them time and time again so when you're setting up a life cycle cost exercise it's always the first time you do it the first time you do the calculations that's the difficult part um, but once they're done they're done forever and you can use those calculations again um, from job to job just using it as a template it doesn't really matter whether it's a detailed detailed life cycle cost exercise or where it's a more broad um, calculation on a component level based on uh, possibly the example I showed you before rain water harvesting system and um, the calculations are the same um, either way you're doing one item or 100 items and um, the calculation of that one item is the same you're just kind of applying it across the board now this is very similar to what we did in the facilities management once we got the irregular cost set up I suppose in a kind of a cash flow analysis and um, we're applying it then to our nominal costs and then we're applying uh, present value discount costs to those nominal costs nominal costs being escalated costs present value being discounted costs again don't get confused too much with the terminology and um, you'll hear different terminology based on uh, what book you're looking at or possibly what paper you're looking at base and real costs tend to be today's money uh, nominal costs and escalated costs are forecast costs um, in the future in an escalated um, I suppose scenario and then present value costs are the discounted costs 
So that's the kind of equation in terms of the time value of money. Okay, so let's look at this. Um, hopefully I'll get it right. Um, so let's delete what's there and try and put a little bit of logic on this. So um, I think I have got the explanation of this open if I just click my internet browser. Okay, so what does this mod function do? The Excel or the Microsoft Excel mod function returns the remainder of a number um, is divided by a divisor. So if some 10 is divided by 10, you get zero. So it doesn't return a number. If 10 is divided by, um, I suppose, 20, you get two. Um, but that's, I suppose, that's a logical division. So again, you don't get a kind of a remainder as such there or a fraction. So let's just go back to our functionality here. Okay, so let's apply that to this first, I suppose, first column. And let's do it in such a way that I can pull it across and pull it down like I've done in the past. So equals, um, again, <laughs> hopefully I'll get this right. If, so I'm using the if scenario. If this MOD functionality, the logical test, MOD open brackets. So if the number, let's say the number one, that first year, um, is divided by 10, okay, close brackets equals zero. Okay, so that's the test. If 10 divided by one equals zero, or it turns a value of zero, um, uh, that's my true value. Okay, so then what I need to do is comma, so what's the truth? Return J9. Okay, so if 10 divided by that returns a zero, put in the actual factor of replacement costs. If it doesn't, put in zero. Okay, so I suppose close brackets. So I suppose the logic of that is if, if that was 10 and it was divided by 10, um, it would return a zero or a value of zero and it, thus you'd put that true value in. It would return that true value. If it's not, it'll put zero in the cell. So this one logically, 10 divided by one is gonna give us a weird calculation um, or, or, or an error or a divisor or a remainder, a fraction of a divisor. Um, it's not gonna be, it's gonna be false, so you'll put zero in there. So only when it's an integer, this calculation basically base um, the calculation on if the 10 is a divisor or an integer of the number across the top, so whether it's a 10 or a 20 or 30, then you'll put in that calculation. That's the logic behind this. Now I'm gonna have to lock a couple of rows and cells here to make sure that when I do pull it across and pull it down, that it works. So in front of two there, I'm gonna put in my little dollar. So I wanna lock the row, dollar. Um, in front of the column here, D9, I want this column to stay the same. I don't want it to pull across from column to column. I'm gonna put in the little dollar. And then in front of J, I'm gonna do the same thing. Put a little dollar in, where's my dollar again? So also J, I want that column to lock. Otherwise, when I pull that across, it'll pull to the next column and it won't work. Um, so let's hit return, see what happens. It returns zero. Now you won't see zero because I've got this little um, optional functionality up here, clicked that if there's a zero in the cell, make it blank. And I think I've showed you that before. Um, if not, actually I might show it to you again. So just to do that, you can click file. Um, down to options, I believe, um, advanced, and scroll down here, you'll probably see it unchecked. I always find it difficult finding this thing. Okay, so uncheck that box there. Show a zero in cells that have a zero value. The reason in a cash flow analysis, I don't want loads of zeros in there. So if there's a zero, it's gonna return a blank. So I'm gonna click okay. All right, well, let's try this. Pull that all the way across, release. So there we go, in year 20, I have that number. In year 10, I have that number. Okay, now let's highlight it again, and hopefully, depending on what lock um, I have in a row, what lock I have in a column, it'll all work, pull down, and then stop at the very end. All right, now I've got a load of divisors there. What I need to do with that is I need to delete them. So I'm gonna just highlight the deletions. Now that's because I've got formulas in there and they're applying to blank rows. So let's just get rid of those. Just 
two blank rows there. Sorry, bear with me. And then my last, I suppose, error there, delete. So what we have there is a fairly logical um, cash flow forecast um, based on the calculation of one formula I did in there. Um, if I just come back, I can see if that I clicked any one of those cells that it should be applying the right scenario based on that little, what I suppose it could be seemed as a bit of a complex calculation because it's got two functions in there, an if function and a MOD function. Um, but hopefully you follow that. Again, it's a bit advanced. Um, if you didn't, don't worry too much about it. Um, maybe somewhere down the line you'll develop that if you do advanced Excel training and um, you might develop that skill. Um, I didn't do advanced Excel training myself. I just kind of picked this up by Googling um, different things and working out and trying to test them um, and trying to figure them out. Um, so once you've that done, um, as you can see, different items happen at different times. Um, what would have returned a zero is shown as blank based on what I did up there at the, the file. Um, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna apply the exact same scenario that you did before um, in other calculations by calculating your, um, I suppose, your escalation factor, by calculating your pre-V factor, and by linking it up there to the cells. Again, if it calculates a zero, after the cell blank, um, it should return a blank. Um, so go ahead and uh, give that a go. Okay, so let's look at the solution to this. So the first item here, the replacement costs is our base costs, and that is just essentially putting in today's money um, what are the cash flows from item to item, from row to row. And using that little bit of a, a formula there, we are able to automate that process. But again, you don't have to use that. It's just something that if you do once, you can use uh, time and time again. And it's a good way of kind of intelligently telling Excel um, how to separate cash flows based on yearly costs. So the regular costs, it's worthwhile remembering that or trying to figure it out um, based on what I've done in the class and the tutorial and keeping it in mind for our other cash flows and not just life cycle cost exercises. Um, so once you've done that, you'll do in the exact same way that you've done before, the escalated nominal costs. So again, calculate your factor and pull them across and then link your factor. If I click one of these cells, link your factor um, and multiply it by its corresponding real costs. Um, do the same then for your escalation factors. Again, and this are so your discount factors. Um, calculate those based on the discount rate or the present value rate, and then get your corresponding cell to cell. Double click one item here just to see. Um, so that particular factor in year eight, multiply by its corresponding item painting in um, in the nominal costs. So there it is there, painting in present value. So that should all total up. You can see that your present value calculation is uh, a bit less or a good bit less than your real costs and that is due to the difference in um i suppose the discount rate and the escalation rate because the discount rate is significantly more than our escalation rate we're going to have a present value that is less than our real costs so that's the logic behind that which i explained before going back to the first exercise that's it finished there again we done as far as the different escalation factors we applied that to the nominal costs and then just like we did in the replacement costs we're assigning or applying those factors to their corresponding nominal costs so let's just come down here and finish it out so we've got a little i suppose chart that we want to produce here and um, the first item are facilities management costs in terms of real costs um, i'm going to click equals and click the actual cost there the four million odd um, then in nominal costs, it's six million or so, and then a present value, it's 2.8 million. Then we're gonna add a replacement equals, click the replacement, go to, no, it's already there, go to a real cost, click that, then click the next item, which is our nominal cost for replacing items, click the sheet, and then click the cell. Then go back, Again, equals to open a formula, click the sheet, and then the last item here is our present value. 
So the totals are already calculated there for each item. Total real costs for boat replacement and FM costs is 5.5 million, 8.7 million, 3.6 million. Now logically, if I change any one item here because of my links, because of the intelligence that I've set up in Excel, and from sheet to sheet, it should uh, change what's going on here. So for example, if I see that my real costs are 5.5 million, 8.72, and I just changed one item here. Let's change, change grounds maintenance, or something that's a little bit more. Change that to 5,000 meters squared. We'll change that. Just bring that across. We'll change this item. We'll change this item. Now, man, if I come down here, it's changed all those across, um, which makes sense. So it's applied all the calculations to that new item. Now, I'm not gonna do that. So I've gone back a couple of steps. Um, what I do wanna show, that was just to show you that changing one item should proliferate through the uh, calculations once you've it set up correctly. Um, what I'm going to do now is I am going to show you a little chart. So let's highlight the, the series of data that we want to chart. Now I could highlight the totals as well, but I'm not. Um, so those items. Group to insert and the type of chart I want to insert is this cumulative chart. So click that. Um, and then pull it down below the line item and oh, scroll down a little bit and maybe increase the size of this thing. Okay, so there we have our real costs, our nominal costs and our present value. You can see that most, the majority of costs are in the blue items here, which is our FM costs. Our replacement costs don't really account as proportion, maybe uh, 20, 30% um, even less of each one of those items. A, non, a real costs, um, or at least our present value costs, as I said before, are less than our real costs um, because um, of that differential between the um, escalation rate and the discount rate. If that was flipped, as in we had a greater uh, uh, escalation rate to discount rate, the present value cost would be higher than the real costs. So you can play around with that once it's constructed. Once you've got your Excel spreadsheet constructed like we do here, you can play around with variable testing um, change quantities, change rates, change um, change the actual rates of the energy costs and discount factors. Just remember though, if you are changing, for example, your escalation rate for 3%, um, do so there, but also do so, um, consistently do so in your uh, replacement costs. So that 2.5 will change to, as I said, 3%. And that in turn then would change uh, these items down here. So you can see that you can see that these numbers have changed. This chart has changed. And again, as I said, I don't necessarily want to do that. So I've gone back um, a couple of steps and left it as is. So that's a tutorial. Um, and that is getting into a little more detail in our lifecycle cost exercise. We may just have one more. Um, but that is, if you can do this, um, these two exercises in terms of FM and replacement, um, I think you can pretty much do any lifecycle cost exercise. It's just a matter of trying to get the data and, and formulate it in such a way that it makes it presentable. You don't have to do it in this way. You see the other templates I might give you or exercises that I might give you do it in a different way. That's the thing about Excel. Um, that's the thing about life cycle costing. Um, no two individuals put it in the exact same format. Um, the calculations should be similar. Um, I, might write, I might even put together a summary page and roll those total costs into a summary page. Um, but once you've got the calculations down, you can pretty much do it and present it whatever way you want. Um, this isn't necessarily in the ISO 15685-5, but again, if I was to put different categorical structure um, or work breakdown structures on these items, I'd be putting them into different codes, which isn't a big deal either. And I might show you that at a future date to put it in line with the ISO standard or maybe even the ICMS standard. So I hope you've enjoyed um, this particular lecture. Um, I think if you can do those, um, you're, you're on the course to, to being able to do life cycle cost exercises. Thanks very much.